Hey Optomancers, Chris here. So our party turns a corner and we come face to face with some vampire spawn. So I guess the cleric will channel divinity and turn some of them. Maybe the wizard's going to lay down a web spell to restrain them. Maybe the rune knight's going to grow and take the dodge action, thus blocking the hallway. Maybe the rogue sneak attacks and then takes the hide action. I mean, at this point, the fight's basically over before they've even gone. That is, if we win initiative. If the vampire spawn win initiative, then they're going to advance on the party, attacking vulnerable party members and preventing most area of effect options. Suddenly, we're in a fight for our lives. Initiative is one of those weird things that it's really, really good to win it, but it doesn't matter how much we win it. When we talk about something like damage, the more the better. But with initiative, I mean, there comes a point where you're just going to win initiative, and it doesn't really matter if you beat the monsters by 1 or you beat them by 20. Either way, you're going first. But if you want to reliably win initiative, there are some build decisions we need to make. But the initiative role can be the most important role we make during an entire combat. As an absolute minimum, it's like getting an extra turn. Though, the ability to react before an enemy moves can have tactical implications far beyond what that implies. But the problem with a random roll is that we can always get unlucky. But if we want a character that reduces the chances of losing the initiative roll, or even a character that never loses initiative, we can do that with some build decisions, at least by a certain level. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the various ways we can get the drop on our enemies by winning initiative just beyond rolling well. Hi, if you like these videos and you'd be interested in supporting them, please find a link to my Patreon page in the video description. Patrons can see these videos early and I don't have YouTube ads on those videos. Additional perks, depending on your level of support, include an exclusive Discord community as well as joining me in playing some D&D each month. Today I want to thank these top level patrons. Bloody9, Brett McDowell, Artherazone, CJ, Chris Coons, Christian Windham, Unknown Watcher, Daniel Sturgeon, Dank Train, and Dash Panther. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the super easy stuff. Now I'm going to be listing all the things I could find that could give you a better initiative check, but if for a list of them, just go to the video description. I'm going to have them all listed and categorized in the video description for your reference. Our dexterity modifier adds to our initiative score. So higher dexterity, then higher initiative. So the easiest build advice is bump your dexterity and that's going to bump your initiative rolls. But what about other ability scores like intelligence, wisdom, and charisma? Well, in theory, we can add all of them to our initiative. If we want to add our intelligence modifier to our initiative score, we can take two levels of wizard. Then we either have to take the war magic or chronergy magic subclasses. War mages get tactical wit. This adds our intelligence modifier to any initiative role. Chronergy wizards get temporal awareness, which does exactly the same thing. If we want to add our wisdom modifier to initiative, we need a slightly bigger level investment but go Ranger 3 and we can take the Gloomstalker subclass. The Dread Ambusher feature, in addition to lots of other stuff, lets us add our Wisdom modifier to any initiative roll. If we want to add our Charisma modifier to initiative, we need to take three levels of Rogue, and then we take the Swashbuckler subclass. This gives us Rakish Audacity, which includes easier sneak attacks, and adding Charisma to our initiative rolls. So in theory, an 8th level character with two levels of Wizard, three levels of Ranger, and three levels of Rogue could be adding Dexterity, Wisdom, Intelligence, and Charisma to initiative rolls. The issue, of course, is good luck having good scores in all those abilities, but if you rolled ability scores instead of using an array or a point by, it certainly is possible. But with ability scores, we're barely scratching the surface of ways to boost our initiative. What if we want to add our proficiency bonus? Well, we have three different ways to do that. The first requires seven levels of Paladin, and then we take the Oath of the Watcher subclass. This gives us Aura of the Sentinel, giving us, and allies within 10 feet, a bonus to initiative equal to our proficiency bonus. If you don't want to wait for level 7, we could take two levels of Bard for Jack of All Trades. This just gives us half our proficiency bonus, but at least we get it sooner. If we want the bonus right from level 1, well, 
then we have to choose the Heron Gone race. Hair Trigger gives us our proficiency bonus to initiative right from character creation. This race is from Wild Beyond the Witchlight, so check with your DM what source books are allowed for racial selection before you decide on playing this. Now I should note that these don't stack, so a Watcher's Paladin 7, Bard 2, Heron Gone still is just getting proficiency bonus to initiative. Okay, so we have four ability scores and our proficiency bonus. What else can we do? Well, it would be nice to have advantage on the roll. And there's lots of ways we can get that. Here's a couple ways that don't have limited uses. Well, the easiest is a single level of cleric with a Twilight Domain. Now, if you play with a DM who watches this channel, then you should check to see if Twilight is even allowed in your campaign because it is an incredibly overpowered subclass. But otherwise, Vigilant Blessing is basically permanent advantage for one party member on initiative that you can switch out whenever you like, and it definitely can go to yourself. Poor Barbarians, they need to wait seven levels. But at that point, they get Feral Instinct, which provides the Barbarian advantage on initiative and the ability to act when they're surprised. Now, this one is dubious, and I wouldn't expect most DMs to let this fly. But I am going to tentatively mention it because I like to be a completionist. In theory, if the task your character is attempting to accomplish is to go first in combat, then maybe the help action could apply. I mean, it says the creature you aid gains advantage on the next ability check it makes to perform the task you're helping with. Frankly, I wouldn't expect this one to work. After all, the help action, technically speaking, is an action that occurs during combat, meaning by the time you can take the help action, initiative is already done with. Still, some DMs are super casual about this one, so it is possibly a way to get advantage. If it is allowed, then you might as well do it all the time, because it's free. The alert feat prevents you from being surprised, prevents advantage from unseen creature attacks, and on top of that gives you a flat plus 5 on all initiative rolls. Okay, so let's move on to spells. The most obvious spell is Gift of Alacrity. This Dunamancy spell gives a d8 bonus to all your initiative rolls for 8 hours. Doesn't require concentration, it's a first level spell, and you can provide it to yourself or you can provide it to an ally. This spell, if allowed, and you should check, by the way, because this is a Dunamancy spell from Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. But, if allowed, it is also a possible Fey Touched Feet pick. So, we have another feat that can boost initiative, in addition to giving us an Ability Score boost and Misty Step. Back to gaining advantage on initiative checks. Well, we can do that through spellcasting as well, with the Enhance Ability spell. By selecting the Cat's Grace option, we can get advantage on all Dexterity Ability checks, for which initiative is 1 as well as reducing falling damage. And if you're not so keen on expending spell slots, well, the Humble Guidance Cantrip gives us a d4 bonus on our next ability check, so cast this before combat, and that's an easy d4. Now, with this one, just a quick word of advice on being a good player. Talk to your DM about how they handle pre-casting guidance before initiative rolls, because it is super annoying to have a player ask, can I add guidance? Can I add guidance? Can I add guidance? Every time you roll initiative, find out how your DM works this and just go with that. Okay, so we've got ability scores working in, we've got proficiency bonus working in, we've got advantage, we've got spells aiding us. What else can we do? Well, let's say we're getting proficiency bonus through, I don't know, Watcher's Paladin. Well, then if we don't choose Heron Gone as our race, another option is Halfling. Halfling Luck allows us to re-roll an initiative roll or any other ability check, any attack roll or saving throw if we roll a 1. By the way, if you have advantage, if either of the rolls is a 1, we can apply Halfling Luck. Now, if we really want to win initiative, and we are willing to expend some resources to win it, there are a few more options. If we've received Bardic Inspiration, or we're Bard and we give it to somebody else, they can expend it to boost their initiative roll. This one's nice because it can be used after you know the initiative results, so if we find that we lose initiative by just a small amount, a Bardic Inspiration die, which starts at a d6 and eventually becomes a d12, can change that result. There's no reason why I would save a Bardic Inspiration if I lost initiative by a couple points. There's very likely nothing else you would use it for that is going to be more dramatic than you winning initiative instead of losing initiative. If we're a third level fighter, we could take the Battlemaster subclass. If we do that, we can take the Ambush Maneuver. This requires we expend a Superiority Die, 
but doing so gives us a d8 bonus to dexterity, stealth, checks, or an initiative roll. Again, the way this is written suggests it's expended after the original check is rolled, so you don't need to expend it unless you need it. If we have seven levels of Artificer, we can expand one of our uses of our Flash of Genius to alter an initiative check. It allows you to add your intelligence modifier to your own or an ally's initiative roll. Now, I just thought of a question that is likely going to come up for some people, and I figure I'll answer it now. Uh, so let's say we're playing a character and we have seven levels of Artificer, uh, but we also have two levels of Wizard, and it's either in Chronergy or in War Magic. Could we use Flash of Genius on our initiative modifier when we're already adding our intelligence? Because that would essentially mean we would add our intelligence twice. I believe the answer to that is yes. Uh, now, with proficiency bonus, uh, I already talked about proficiency bonus. There are specific rules about stacking proficiency bonus, so uh, that wouldn't stack there. But if we're adding an ability modifier, it should stack. And we do see this precedent already. Uh, for example, if we're playing a Paladin and we're making a Charisma saving throw, we would add our Charisma modifier, of course, to any Charisma saving throw. But if we have Aura of Protection, we would be adding that Charisma modifier a second time. Designers have clarified that does work. So in this case, again, I believe it would work. Uh, so just thought I'd answer that question before it comes up. If we're a Fiend Pact Warlock and we have six levels, then we're going to have Dark One's Own Luck, which allows us to add a D10 to an ability check or saving throw, so we can absolutely use that to an important initiative roll. If we are a 6th level sorcerer with a Wild Magic subclass, we actually have two ways to alter initiative. First is Tides of Chaos, and that can give us advantage on one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, and initiative is an ability check. And then with Bend Luck, we could expand a very expensive two sorcery points but we could use that to add a d4 to our initiative roll. Alternatively, we could use this same feature to apply a d4 penalty to an enemy's initiative check. Which is better is going to depend on where the other allies and enemies are in the initiative order. Speaking of applying penalties to an opponent's initiative check, we can do that with cutting words, if we are a bard of at least third level and with the lower college subclass. This uses up an inspiration point, and then we're going to roll the inspiration die and apply that as a penalty to an enemy's initiative check. Now this one's expensive, but if you just rolled terrible and it needs to be fixed, here's where the lucky feat can come into play. It takes one of your valuable uses, but if you should have won initiative and then you didn't, this could be a bargain. Now this one you can't use after the fact, but if you just want advantage on a single initiative roll, you can spend inspiration to get it. Now, this feature I see house ruled all the time, and some tables don't use it at all. But as written, it is perfectly valid to use on initiative, but you would need to use it before you make the check. Now, this one requires that you have a chance to prepare. But technically speaking, if you are a rune knight and you've activated the storm rune within a minute of rolling initiative, then you can use it to grant advantage on an initiative check to yourself or to somebody else. So those are the things we can do with our build. But of course, we can always hope for some magic items to boost our initiative even further. Here are some of the main options. The Stone of Good Luck is a nice item, gives a plus one bonus to all ability checks and saving throws. And yes, that includes initiative. This one is going to require an attunement slot, but definitely worth the attunement slot good item. Speaking of being worth the attunement slot, this is the Rod of Alertness. It gives us permanent advantage on our initiative rolls in addition to lots of other useful stuff. Now, if we want advantage and we don't want to use attunement, well, that's where the Sentinel Shield comes in. It does that along with giving advantage on perception rolls, and you just need to be holding the shield to get the bonus. And since it doesn't require attunement, you can just pass it off to whichever party member is going to benefit from it. Another magic item providing advantage on initiative rolls is the Weapon of Warning. This one requires attunement, but unlike the Sentinel Shield, you don't even need to be holding it to get the advantage. You also can't be surprised, and it wakes you and your allies up at the start of combat. This one's a bit more obscure, but Scorpion Armor from Tomb of Annihilation gives a flat plus 5 bonus to initiative. There's a curse on this armor that causes damage if you put it on or you take it off. No problem, you just need a wish spell to remove the curse. Or, if your DM lets you sleep in plate armor, I mean, 
then you could just leave it on forever. There are many magic items that can increase our ability scores, so those can help with our initiative. Worthy of special mention, though, is the Manual of Quickness in Action. This is a very rare item. It's not unique, which means you could hope for multiples. Technically speaking, you can achieve a dexterity score of up to 30 through multiple uses of these manuals. If you live a really long time, you can even use the same manual after a century has passed. We already know we can add intelligence, wisdom, and or charisma to our initiative as well, depending on our build. So the Tome of Understanding, Clear Thought, and Leadership and Influence can boost our initiative scores as well, or any other item that improves these scores. I mean, in theory, and this won't ever happen, of course, but in theory, you could get a plus 40 bonus to initiative from ability scores alone. A magic item you will likely never get your hands on is the Sword of Cass. But if you do, along with the other various artifact properties, it does give you a d10 bonus on all your initiative rolls. Just be prepared to own a sword that's wholly evil and is likely smarter than you are. Oh, and this one might not be obvious, but the Ion Stone of Mastery increases your proficiency bonus by one, which can open up all kinds of shenanigans. But for the purpose of initiative, well, our Heron Gone, Bard, or Watcher's Paladin is going to get a bonus here. So that's a pretty long list. I doubt it's exhaustive, but that's what I was able to find. Lots of things that add flat bonuses to initiative, lots of things that add different ability scores to initiative, there's multiple things that add proficiency bonus to initiative, lots of things add die rolls to initiative, uh, a lot of things expend resources but can give you a bonus to one initiative check. There's all kinds of magic items that can boost initiative. and. I do want to discuss some things that you might be thinking of to let you know what won't improve your initiative. So initiative can be won or lost, but it is never succeeded or failed. So any feature that allows you to alter a successful or failed ability check is not going to work with initiative. This includes things like the Talisman Pack for Warlock, the Sorcerer's Magical Guidance feature, or the Silvery Barb spell. Those silvery barbs could potentially be used to apply to initiative if we were to have cast it within the last minute and applied advantage to an ally's next check and that ally hasn't made any checks yet, then in theory silvery barbs could apply to initiative, but in most cases it's not going to work. Now what about the rogue's reliable talent? It says, by 11th level you have refined your chosen skills until they approach perfection. Whenever you make an ability check that lets you add your proficiency bonus, now the way I read this, if you were a Herongon or a 7th level Watcher's Paladin, then this would apply. Obviously, if you're in the aura of a Watcher's Paladin, it's their proficiency bonus you're adding, so you wouldn't be able to use Reliable Talent. And I'm not sure when it comes to the Bard's Jack of All Trades, because Jack of All Trades is adding half of proficiency. I'm not sure that qualifies for a Reliable Talent. Probably not. This reminds me a little bit of the discussion about Reliable Talent being used on all skills once you have jack of all trade and the designers originally said yes that works and then they changed their mind and said no that doesn't work and that's the way it's stood since then so presumably if it doesn't work with skills it's not going to work with initiative checks but with watcher's paladin and with heron gone we are adding our full proficiency bonus that seems to me to qualify for reliable talent but those are the only ways to qualify for reliable talent here. But any feature that requires proficiency, such as the Soul Knife's side bolstered knack, is not going to work. Just because we're adding proficiency bonus doesn't mean we're actually proficient in initiative checks. So those are the ways to boost initiative. In my next video, we'll talk about how to fit some of these options on a character without giving up the character being effective. And I'll have two quick builds as examples. Hope you'll join me. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon.